sometimes you have to incur yourself. You gotta pat your own self on the back, yeah. Yeah, you, you have to seek victory to win a test. And no matter how no you feel, no matter how you feel, speak the word. Peace to all my brothers and sisters who are joining me for our PRBC Worship Live broadcast. I greet you this morning in the mighty and strong name of Jesus Christ, and I'm excited to be able to share this moment of time with you today as we are staying connected in worship on this glorious Resurrection Sunday celebration. Pilgrim and all of our guests today, I am thankful to God that we have this opportunity to engage as we have prepared and made each of our homes a house, yes, a house of worship, where we can praise God because of who he is uh, without hesitation, knowing that we are hoped up because God is in control of any and every situation that we may face. Pilgrim, I definitely, I definitely miss you, and I miss our fellowship together. I want to encourage everyone that can to continue every effort to check in with one another on a daily basis. I'm asking that you call someone this week, call someone this week you haven't spoken with, and do me a favor, just shower them with some love and the wonderful positive conversation. Oh, beloved, we are still, I wanna let you know, we are still monitoring all information regarding this serious situation, this COVID-19 issue. And we would like to remind everyone to stay prayed up, stay home, stay safe, and stay informed. With that being said, we also encourage everyone to maintain, I want you to maintain 
Of course, your connection to God, and here's what we want you to do, want you to maintain your daily devotional time, your Bible study time, use your library and your reference work. And then we want you to also uh, spend quality time in prayer. And I hope I got an amen in your house. Now, while we are not meeting in person, I am excited. I'm very excited to be able to remain connected to you via our website at prmbcgr.org. That's prmbcgr.org. It'll be playing in the broadcast uh, so you can check us out. You can also find us on our social media pages. That would be on Facebook. Uh, just make sure you look up Pilgrim Rest, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Amen. But uh, Facebook, YouTube, and also uh, Instagram. Now, beloved, it's been a marvelous engagement with you this morning. We are excited about this resurrection celebration. And uh, I would just like to take the time to say thank you, Pilgrim Rest. Thank you for your partnership and ministry and your faithfulness in your giving. Got a great report the last couple of weeks, and I thank you for how you continue to support the ministry. During this time of our inability to gather collectively, as is our tradition, I'm asking that you continue, yes, you continue to contribute to this ministry. Your giving and your gifts afford us the ability, gives us the ability to continue in our ministry efforts and allows to continue us to allows us to continue to support the needs of families in our community. It also is allowing us to spread apart a bit, spread out a little bit and bring worship services and other engaging programming virtually. Now, to all who may be watching our broadcast uh, from wherever you are, you also have an opportunity, yes, an opportunity to sow a financial seed into this ministry. If you are being blessed through this ministry, we ask that you join us financially, and we thank you in advance uh, for your partnership. To give, you can go to our webpage, of course, at prmbcgr.org, and all you need to do is click on the area for online giving, which will then direct you to Give Plus, our online uh, and slash mobile platform uh, for contributions. You can access, access Give Plus on our Facebook page, and you can just go there and then click uh, the link for donations. You can also download the Give Plus app on your iPhone or Android devices. And I actually, beloved, strongly advise using this method of contributing as it is very convenient and it's also very secure. So, beloved, you can also, though, we have another method. You can, if you want to, you can mail your contributions right here to the campus, Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church, 510 Franklin Street, Grand Rapids, Michigan. That would be zip code 49507. Again, we want to thank you for your generosity and to our ministry. And I'd like to say amen right there. And I know my leaders are with me. And uh, we are grateful to God for all of you. We want you to be blessed now with this uh, music rendition from our very own Inspirational Choir.
Let the church say amen. On this Resurrection Sunday, we do have a word from the Lord. And we're going to ask that you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, that familiar passage. Before we get started, let me just say for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of Scripture might have hope. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Brothers and sisters, I ask that you turn with me to Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. On today, we're asking God to give us fresh water out of this well of truth to transform our thoughts as well as our actions. Matthew, chapter 28, you can follow along whichever version you have before you. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Amen. The text says, verse 1, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Here it is. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Indeed, he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear or respect great joy and ran to bring his disciples the word. My brothers and sisters, I just want to talk for a few minutes on, preach on for a few minutes. He is risen. Yes, he is risen. As we have gathered virtually from our various homes this morning, we are intentionally setting time aside in recognition of this holy season. And today in the culmination and or climax of the redemptive story in which Jesus Christ because he is alive, he has given us a reason to celebrate and rejoice. Beloved, today is a consecrated moment in time to reflect on the sacrifice of our Savior. And on today, as we think on these things, we must embrace the theological supposition of the importance of the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Yes, for centuries, believers have celebrated the redemptive story of Jesus Christ. And in this moment of unprecedented unrest in which we are facing a challenge unlike anything the world has ever seen before, we have the opportunity as believers and also the ongoing responsibility to continue to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ is risen. The midst of the magnitude of our right now experience, the calming comfort that we can claim is the fact that we know Jesus is our risen Savior and God is still on the throne. We celebrate with intentional joy, beloved, in our lives because of the hope, yes, the hope we have in God. And this is an opportunity to deepen our relationship with God and to work together in kingdom building. Oh, beloved, being committed to kingdom building is a lifetime of activity. It is a lifetime of relating and being in obedience to what God has called us to do. As I look at the spiritual state of our churches today through observation, there is and seemingly there seems to be a push and an obsession for some to concentrate on the wrong thing. The question that needs to be answered is, are we truly committed to be the church of Jesus Christ, catch it, outside of the building? We are finding that the church has become, in some senses, focused on superficial notions of self-indulgence and leaning toward transactional status, which emphasizes what can I get instead of what can I give or how can I obey the commands of God? Jesus Christ spoke 
to us, beloved, about building one another up and relational connectivity and empowering one another and treating our neighbor right and living holy lives, living righteously. And yes, building relationships in ministry and affecting change in our community and honoring God with our worship. In other words, God has called us to live a transformative life. God has called us to be a light in a dark world. This is the time and the season for us as believers to challenge ourselves and then to challenge one another to grow up in our discipleship so we can share the gospel, the good news of our Savior. Today, as we celebrate the resurrection, celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, we offer a word to encourage and challenge us as we live in the power of God. What is the message of this resurrection celebration? Well, I'm glad you asked. And I just want to say, I want to suggest that the answer to the question is found right here in our text today. And based on divine evidence, based on heavenly evidence, based on spiritual evidence based on physical evidence and personal evidence and relational evidence and based on trace evidence and historic evidence, come on somebody, and scientific evidence, we can be sure that he is risen. The son of God, Jesus, was all God and all man at the same time. He came to earth to accomplish the will of God, the Father the hypostatic union, that being the divinity of God, housed in the flesh of humanity, humbled and emptied himself for us here on terra firma so we could have eternal life. He is risen. These words sum up the message of this resurrection celebration. There are four words written within the walls. I want to concentrate and focus on the walls of verse 6 in this 28th chapter in Matthew, which gives us a straightforward overview of our responsibility in this resurrection celebration. The four words in this record of sacred scripture are commands that the reader can connect to even today. Here it is. This text, we find a duality of directives, or better yet, complemental commands. The text, the words in the text are come see right there, look in your Bible, and go tell. Verses 6 and 7. Here it is. Watch what the writer gives us. He says in verse 6, the angel says, he is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly, from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. By way of summary, beloved, watch this. Jesus' final week on earth, we find him coming to the city. He weeps over Jerusalem. And by Thursday, he is actually spending time with the disciples as he shares in the Passover meal to celebrate God's delivering power. And let me pause here and share with you why it is important to celebrate the fact that God delivers. Oh yeah, the truth is there are some things that only God can deliver you from. And that's a shout and that's a hallelujah right there. My brothers and my sisters, let me help lift you today. Your past does not predicate who you are in Christ. The fact is nobody can stop what God starts. The enemy has no authority over your life. And here it is, God's power to deliver is for us all. I should get a should get a good amen right there in your home on your couch. Here it is. There is no time to put your head down and quit. You have to realize who God is. And at present, the truth is you may be temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials and you may want to be removed from them. But let me turn a thought here. The things you wish were most removed from your life, have you been living a while? Come on, help me, are often the very things that God is using <clears throat> to shape your life and make you into the mature believer he wants you to be. Oh, catch this, beloved. Life is not a series of random freak accidents. Life is not totally frantic. Life is not without meaning. God knows what's going on. 
and he's weaving the fabric of your life. And the tapestry has light and dark threads. You will have happy and sad times. You will have mountain top and valley low moments. You will, I'm going to tell you, you will sing some Frankie Beverly and Maze in your life. Joy and pain. Come on, sunshine and rain. Help me in your house today. God will use it all to give richness and texture and color to your life. All to his glory. Oh, beloved, nothing can come into the life. Can I help us? Nothing can come into the life of a child of God without God's permission. And here it is. Write this down for later and come share it, or share it with somebody and keep it so you can look at it later. Everything is father filtered. Yeah, you heard what I said. Everything is father filtered. And Pilgrim, you heard that before. And yes, the overwhelming good news for us today is the fact that God is able to turn crucifixions into resurrections. Hallelujah. So we ought not to be talking about giving up and we ought not to allow the enemy to have room in our minds to push thoughts of doubt. Because even though on the outside, it may look like things are falling apart on us, on the inside, come on somebody, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. Beloved, in this life, there is something more important than your pain. There's something more important than your disappointment, your issues, your problem, your circumstance. There's more important, something more important than your COVID-19 in-house inconvenience. Oh, beloved, help me if you can. The important thing is what you are learning from each and everything you go through. And who are you leaning on and how? Are you growing in your relationship with God? Here it is, church. You ought to realize that God has you on ah, his mind. And you ought to recognize, recognize the fact that God is still on the throne and he deserves all the praise and all the glory. I'm here to tell you that he is. Jesus is risen. Oh, beloved Jesus, back to the story, Jesus was tried as uh, tried in a misguided court, convicted on trumped up charges, and then murdered on the cross at Calvary out on Galgotha's Hill, the place of execution. And now Jesus has died. He had been betrayed by Judas, forsaken by his disciples, denied by Peter, tried by the Sanhedrin, condemned to die by Pontius Pilate, beaten, battered, bruised, and bloody, crucified on the cross, at Calvary, and Jesus gave up his life. He died, and while most of the apostles went into hiding, Joseph of Arimathea was given permission to take the body of Jesus down from the cross. He took the body and buried it in his own tomb. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Y'all with me in the story? And here in the text, the angel, according to the Matthean account, says, he is not here. He is risen, as he said, just like he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. On resurrection morning, women came to the tomb concerned that they would not be able to get in. Mark helps us there, Gospel of Mark. But when they arrived, they were in for a surprise of their lives. A great earthquake had taken place and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled back the stone. Here it is. When the women arrived, they were told not to fear. And the angel, knowing they were seeking Jesus, the angel told the women, he is not here, for he is risen, just as he said. Come, see, come, see. Here it is, beloved. Come, see was an invitation to have clarity in understanding regarding what Jesus had already said. I hope you got that right there in the text. It's right there, right in front of us. But let me suggest this to try to convey the truth within this text. There is a real difference between the words look and see. Here it is, truth is when I look at something, I may not grasp what I'm looking at. I may not comprehend or understand it fully. It's like if I watched a show, TV show or movie once, then I watched it again and I seen more in it than I did the first time. Here it is, beloved. 
when I truly see something, I actually comprehend it, or better yet, I understand it. And this is what the angel, simply what the angel wanted the women to do. The angel wanted them to understand as evidence that the tomb was empty and that Christ had arisen from the dead. And just like these women in our text, we are being given an opportunity to demonstrate what we believe by standing on the truth of God's word and by faith that Jesus, know by faith and to be able to stand on faith that Jesus Christ is arisen from the dead. And here it is, know that he is, yes, he is alive. I'm here to announce he is risen. And we have a responsibility, here it is, to come and see, to understand and believe. And after we realize what God has done for us through Jesus, we must go and tell. Here it is, simply go and tell. That's some action in the text. But the angel, the angel said, he is not here. He is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples. He is risen from the dead. The women, oh, were told, you see it, they were told to go and tell. And God did not intend for anyone to stare continually into the empty tomb. What about the empty tomb? And God hasn't called church, churches and people that are the church to sit in a building and not do nothing. Oh, help me somebody. The women were told to go and tell the disciples about the resurrection. Well, my brothers and my sisters, this translates to a practical point right here because we are all to be like a beggar telling another beggar where to find some bread. Oh, help me somebody. We have the responsibility to do more in ministry because of the truth of the redemptive story. Salvation, yeah, it's free. And Jesus is alive. And we ought to tell the meaning behind the resurrection story every chance we get. Oh, beloved, there's a story in the Bible that we all know about a demon-possessed man who lived in the country of the Gadarenes. He was healed by Jesus. He experienced Jesus' power. And then he wanted to travel with Jesus. But catch what the Lord says. Instead, he was told to go home and tell the great things the Lord woo, has done for him. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, because of Jesus Christ, it is our task to tell others what great things the Lord has done for us. And you should be a good witness. You should have a testimony about your life, how God has made a way. You ought to be able to tell somebody, go ahead and punch somebody on the couch. Tell them God's been good to me. Oh, beloved, God's been good. And the message of the resurrection is he is risen. And our responsibility is to understand the significance and share it with others. The Bible says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Right there in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1 says, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness shall dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. At the cross, beloved, wickedness was not appeased. Wickedness was confronted. At the cross, sin was not overlooked. Sin was atoned for and paid for. God's greatest righteousness confronted man's greatest wickedness and righteousness. Come on and shout with me, somebody. Righteousness won. Peace was attained through the blood of the lamb on the cross. And I thank God for the cross. I thank God for Jesus today. And I thank God that Jesus is risen. Oh, beloved, I want to share with you a short story. There's a story which is told of a nine-year-old boy who suffered with Down's syndrome. In Sunday school, he made his way to Sunday school and at his church and uh, the other kids in Sunday school, watch this, they made fun of him because he was a little different. The Sunday before resurrection celebration, the teacher gave each of the kids a plastic container and asked them to look for symbols of new life 
like seeds and leaves and then place them inside the container. The idea was to open their containers on Resurrection Sunday and discuss what they had found. Well, beloved, the story goes when the children gathered, they had collected all sorts of things like flowers and leaves and butterflies and dirt and rocks. They got all kind of stuff in these containers, a plethora of things. But watch the story. When the teacher opened the young man's container that had Down syndrome, his container, unlike the rest of the children, it was empty. One child spurted out and said real loudly, that's not fair. He didn't do it right. But the young man with Down syndrome, he tugged on the teacher's sleeve and said, I did do it right. He said, my container, whoa, help me, Holy Spirit. My container is empty because whew, the tomb is empty. Ah, uh, the young man stood up and said, and that's the only reason why we have new life. Well, beloved, I've held you too long. I've held you long enough today. Now I just want to let you know, Pilgrim, you know where I'm going. Well, good day, church. And may the Lord God bless you real good on this Resurrection Sunday. But on my way to heaven from here, let me encourage you because we get to celebrate today being Resurrection Sunday celebration. We get to celebrate his incarnation. Jesus in his humiliation. And most of all, we get to celebrate him in his exaltation. The Bible says in Philippians chapter two, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant. I got a Bible reader coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Here it is, beloved. Therefore, God has, yeah, he has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above uh, every written name, that at the name of Jesus, every written knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, beloved, in the script of salvation, God authored the plan and God allowed the plan. Jesus accepted the plan. Jesus accomplished the plan. And Jesus, come on and help me somebody, tell somebody, Jesus applied the plan. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, on this Resurrection Sunday, Jesus' death was voluntary. Jesus' death was volatile and violent. Jesus' death was vicious and vicarious. And yes, Jesus' death, through his death, there is victory. Because of the care of God and the compassion of Jesus, our lives are connected whoo, to victory. Jesus died for you and me. Oh, on that old rugged cross at Calvary. And for the believer, crucifixion moves us to celebration because we understand the results of the cross. Because of Jesus, the results from the cross and the route through the grave offered resurrection, which means because of Jesus Christ, we have access to eternal life and an eternal reward. That's good news, saints. We have everlasting life because of Jesus' sacrifice. He is risen. And I know I don't deserve his love, beloved. The songwriter wrote, I don't know why Jesus loved me. I don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life, but I'm with the songwriter. Oh, but I'm glad. I'm so glad that he did. Is there anybody glad today in this virtual service? Is there anybody? No, it was nobody but Jesus. Oh, I can thank God for the blood of Jesus today. I can thank God for Jesus' sacrifice for me on the cross at Calvary. I can thank God for his redemptive plan to rescue and restore man. One Friday, 
Come on, Deacon Bass, I hear you. One Friday, he died. One Friday, he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And I'm glad today because right out of Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose and stood on resurrection ground. He is risen, beloved. And I can testify today and tell somebody, I believe he's alive. And I thank him for living through the Holy Spirit, even in me. He's alive, my Savior lives. Let the church say, amen and amen. Now, my brothers and my sisters, if you are not saved today, you have an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ right now. The good news is man needed salvation. The redemptive story tells us about God's mercy and his grace. Because of Jesus, salvation has been made available to anyone who will believe. My brother, my sister, this is the moment. Eternity is at stake. Now, I'm sure in what the Bible teaches that without Jesus Christ, without believing that he was died, buried in robes, if he's not in your life and he's not your savior, haven't made your savior, heaven will not be your eternal home. Today, I want to give you the opportunity to receive Christ. All you have to do is open your heart, allow the seed of salvation to take root in your life. Admit you are a sinner. Ask for forgiveness and be willing to turn away from your sin. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin on the cross at Calvary. Receive Jesus into your heart and your life as your Savior. Oh, beloved, for the Bible declares, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. God bless you real good. God bless you, everyone. Today, I want to close, I want us to close together in prayer on this Resurrection Sunday, this celebration of the reward of new life. If you would just for a moment, pilgrim all over the city, with your family and friends, just posture yourself for prayer as we humbly present ourselves before God with respect and certainty for who he is. Let's pray together. Oh God, thank you for the opportunity to give you glory for who you are. Thank you today for your keeping grace and right now, Father, I'm asking that you touch those that are listening to us today. Meet their needs. Give them comfort and peace. Strengthen them and guide them on this journey. God, in the midst of these times that we are living in, we are thankful that you remain the same. We are thankful that you haven't changed. And oh, right now, God, we are asking that your presence be understood. God, we thank you for our families and we thank you for the opportunity to love one another. God, we pray now for our leaders on all levels of government. God, we pray for all those dealing with illnesses and we pray for those who have suffered loss. Pray for those on the front line, those medical personnel caring for people all over the world. God, we pray right now, even for every pastor, allow them to be steadfast in their call. God, grant your people strength in the strong name of Jesus. God, touch right now in a mighty way. We'll fail not to give you all the praise for you are worthy of all the glory. Thank you for your son. Thank you that he is risen. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Oh God, we thank you now for what eyes have seen, what ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. The 
Only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And the church said, all over the city, amen. God bless you. God bless you real good, family. Until next time, this is Pastor Harris. I want you to remember, God loves you. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Peace, love, and joy, all in the name of the Lord. Take care. Stay safe. Stay prayed up. And the church said, amen.